you know, you need to open yourself up to the fact that you don't perceive everything right away. And so to try and control everything, to try and just like, be like, I know what's best. I like, you don't really know because your perception, and, and I find this to be particularly true with screenwriting. And I suppose acting in somewhat true too, but it's like, I don't really know what I'm getting into until I'm there. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, you're in a all podcast. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a podcast episode. Welcome. Uh, yeah, so we, uh, yeah, we're not we're not so serious today. So if you're a new time listener, this means that we just kind of wing it. We just start talking, see where it leads us, and ultimately end up somewhere. If you're a long time listener, you've heard us say variations of this a few times. <laughs> um, but you know, I, let me, let me start with this. Cause we don't know what we're talking about, but you know, why, why do this? Why go this way? Sometimes it's just to save time. Sometimes it's just to get into it. But you know, if I could pair this over to like artistry, you know, as a screenwriter, sometimes it's good to just start writing. You know, I, I, I don't recommend it most of the time. I don't think it's actually the way to go most of the time, but sometimes it's the best way to go. It's the only way to go. And, you know, for me, sometimes it's about just going, okay, uh, let's put two characters in a situation and have them sort out this shit, okay? And then let's just see what happens. And then let's see if something gets born out of that. And if it does, then I might stop the actual screenwriting process. Maybe I just get a scene or a few scenes done or something like that. Maybe it's even half of a scene. And then I'll go, okay, I feel like I'm figuring something out here. And then I might go back to the planning stage and start to work that out. I feel like with these episodes, Evan, it's kind of like that for us. We mm. start off, we get rolling, you know, like just like I mentioned something like that. And then we see if it leads somewhere. And then we kind of go, okay, what are, what are we talking about here? What's, what's coming up that's interesting? Let's go with that, you know? So that's kind of how these work. If anyone was curious, I figured I'd yeah. just it out. <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because i find that oftentimes like whenever we do this we always kind of do this little preamble on the whole thing of like okay so we don't have a topic and da 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 and usually we ended up we end up talking about something that's kind of somehow related to the way in which we're going into the conversation <laughs> um yeah. which i think is is you know it's great there's we've had a lot of fantastic conversations that way and even what you were just saying right now i was just like oh yeah you know it's like how how there's no set process for for anything you know sometimes like you've 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 got to take a new approach at something like and and for people who over plan everything and never actually get going on it you know it's like some there can be there can be something very helpful about just diving in, just jumping into something. And maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe you have to end up scrapping what it is. Maybe it's not, it, it it's not fully usable or doesn't, doesn't make it in the final cut of whatever it is that you're doing, but maybe it got you to a certain place. Maybe it, it sparked the thing that helped you to, to put the missing pieces together for, that thing, that story, that, that whatever it is. So, you know, the, and, and, you know, sometimes there's just, it can be super helpful just to jump at the thing that's right in front of you right now. It's like, what's the oppor what's the opportunity that's right in front of you? Um, and, and go with that thing and don't worry so much about, you know, what comes of it afterwards what's the opportunity right now that you that you have that's that's kind of hot in your hands so to speak so um yeah i totally i totally get get where you're coming with that yeah yeah well i mean you know i think it, with creativity there's always like lots of excuses we can make about like why we're not ready 
And you mentioned that, you know, there's the people who plan and plan and plan and they never execute. And I've actually, you know, I've seen this a lot with people in the arts where they, they do this with education where I think it's a big mistake where they go, I just, I got to learn this and then I got to learn that. And then I'm going to learn this thing. And, you know, once I learn this, then I'll start. And these Mm. people who do this, um, these people, um, (laughs) (laughs) when we do things like this, I, I find when people get caught in that idea there's always something else to learn. And they're like, well, you know, I thought all I had to do was learn this, this, and this, and I did that. But now actually I realized through learning these things, I actually have to learn this. So I'm going to learn this over here. And then it just keeps like, it's like that forever. And then they never do anything. And so one of my kind of tenets about creativity is like, no, you do it as you learn it. You don't wait for the next thing. You don't, you know, you don't wait till you get all the pieces you start today. Like, and I think that's absolutely vital because there are so many people that have been in the planning stages for sometimes years and sometimes Mm -hmm. decades. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's crazy. Like think about that. It's crazy. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, the whole, like, like the pipe dream thing that, uh, Mm. you know, reference where it's just like, it's, it's all just a thing that you're, you're cooking up and concocting and constantly tinkering with but but there's never the pen never meets paper rubber never meets the road it never you know this the steps to actually make it happen never never actually come into into fruition um and uh you know it's it's interesting i've i every now and then i see these articles like pop up somewhere or someone gives a talk on like why it's like it's like why super intelligent people often don't succeed or something along those lines right and it's because i think you know a lot of times intelligent people like there's a lot of different things that are behind that because intelligent people very often are more aware of the things that they don't know um which can really be very destructive to your your confidence or or your in yourself and your ability to think that you can do something right. Whereas, you know, sometimes people who are not so quote unquote intelligent, um, you know, are just a little bit more ready and willing to just kind of take, to just jump into something because they're not, they're, they're not as aware of the things that could go wrong. And there's problems that can come up that way too. But, you know, very often, um, you know, it's not, a certain kind of intelligence that's required to, to succeed. And, you know, and arguably, you know, you could get, go down into the, down the rabbit hole with this one. You could say that that's a sign of like not being intelligent, (laughs) right? It's like, well, it's not very intelligent for you to just keep, you know, sitting, you're spinning your wheels. That's like, it's a very, it's a certain kind of intelligence that we're looking at, but that's a whole other thing. Um, I know it's interesting, Brandon, about, that we've landed on or we we've, we've started this conversation in this place is that um you know I've started reading uh a book that you've mentioned to me many times and in our um in a podcast that we did uh, a little while ago where we answered uh, a bunch of the question we we each answered the questions that we always ask our guests and uh our first question is what is a book that's had the greatest impact on you um and you said uh think and grow rich by napoleon hill and it's a book that you know is is referenced by so many people has influenced so many people um so i got a copy and i started reading it and uh you know he talks about the same thing you know like in in many regards where it's like here's all of these people who have succeeded massively. And some of these people didn't even graduate high school. Some of these people, like they weren't, they weren't extraordinarily educated people, but they, um, they had something else that they were going and, and they didn't avoid failure. You know, they, they had failures, they had challenges and things like that, but they weren't, there, there was nothing that, on paper 
about these people that would necessarily strike you as them being, you know, the um, the cream of the crop <laughs> of the human population. But um, uh, I'm it's still early days for me in 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 the book. But um, there's definitely some interesting stuff go- that I'm reading in that, and uh, that seems to be like tying into this conversation. You know, I was thinking about you told me you're reading it. You were saying that you had some reactions to like, you know, some, some line that he says something about you got to want it with a hot burning desire or something like that, like money. But I was thinking about that. as like, you know, if it's not money, but it's like, if he wasn't talking about money, what would he talk about? I mean, he, he'd have to pick something that people want. I think the nice thing about money being the focus of that book is like, everybody kind of wants money, but the money is just a placeholder for, whatever, whatever your desire is, whatever the thing is you're trying to build or create in your life, Mm -hmm. you know, you could replace it with the money or the finance thing. But the thing is, is I think what, with that book, Think and Grow Rich, just money and wealth is an accessible thing for everybody. You don't have to have a specific interest for you to use the book. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it as I went for a walk last night and I was like, yeah, like how else would you write that book? getting someone to focus on something like it's just it's 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 in a way i think the money thing is generic you can use it Mm -hmm. literally for money but you could use it for other things and so um i think that's worth kind of considering when we think about that book for sure yeah i mean i mean uh you know with everything i think yeah like there is there is this point where when you learn actually think that there's this point where you learn where it actually becomes detrimental to your success and you have to kind of pass through this stage. So if you never create and you just get into the stage of it being detrimental, you don't, you don't ever want to get into it because now you like know too much. And part of, um, you know, part of doing something is because you don't know any better is such an important part of like the process of doing anything that you do in life. Like when you start to know everything about everything, you, you have more stuff to think about and more stuff now that's playing. Right. And it's, it's a trap to me. It's kind of like, if even when you learn a bunch of stuff, you have to kind of go back to the basics. I had a client actually just call me this week and they wrote a really great script in the course and, and all of that. It's, you know, it's an awesome screenplay and they were writing on that and banking on that. Like, yeah, yeah, I've got this really good screenplay. I'm rocking and rolling. And they called me and they were like, yeah, you know, so I started another screenplay, you know, since the class has been over and I've been, I've been doing that for a bit. Like, and they were like, you know what? I realized that I didn't know, like I, I skipped the basics. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, there was like, I was really, they called me and they're like, I was really appreciating the course because the course gets you to focus on the foundations of what essentially build a story out. And I, yeah. you know, writing on my, now I know this thing, um, and which I thought was great because it's like, well, look, you're aware of that. Right. And sometimes that's what it takes for you to understand why these lessons are so valuable and why I even teach them in the first place, because when you're learning them, you're like, oh, they just work and everything's so easy. But then as you get further down the line, like I think about where someone starts when they start uh, in in the screenwriting course, particularly, they start from generally this place of they don't really know anything. And even if they come in and they think they know something, immediately the course goes, do you really know anything at all? Like it kind of does that to you. And you go, shit, I've been writing for X amount of years and I don't know anything. And then it it breaks all that down in a way, in a really healthy, good way. And then you rebuild everything back up. And by the end of it, you forget that you never knew anything. But when you start your next screenplay, it all starts over again, always. So it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter how experienced you are. The basics never really go away. The fundamental foundational stuff never goes away. It's always there. And when you try to skip it because you think you're, you're beyond it now, you just run into the same problems we all run into, whether you're brand new or a seasoned veteran. Yeah. Like I think that, you know, one of the things that I just discovered about myself just last year 
you know, and it's like one of those discoveries that you have about yourself that you're like, well, this isn't so surprising. You know, like this seems like it was always sort of right there. I've just now named it. I've just now become like more conscious of it. But one of my highest values with it in life, in, in how to live life and how to approach doing things is simplicity. It's like, is, is to make things simple because I think simple is actionable, right? Simple allows us to, to take steps. Complex is overwhelming, right? Like complexity can be overwhelming, but that doesn't. And we, th I think that that's why we overlook a lot of the basics, you know, because we think it's like, no, 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 but that's like the basics are for, you know, the beginners, that's for the amateurs, yeah. that's the whatever, you know, and we get kind of on our high horses about certain things and, and we end up neglecting these things and, and realizing like, no, it's like, but those basics are the foundation for which all of these little complexities come out. That's one of those things that we've discussed many times. It's like this is so true for creativity and art is that the complexities can only come out from these simple things, but those simple things have to be there. Like you said, the foundation, you can't, when you're building any kind of a building, a house or a, or a high rise, the foundation has to go in first. There's no, you can't, you can't do all of these marvelous architectural things without having that that first thing put into place you can't it's mm -hmm. not possible no and you don't see people trying to avoid that step in that in that realm <laughs> but we try to do it in 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 the creative space right very often and not not understanding that like no there are actually some things, things that, that kind of help, help just hold, hold this this this, this, this thing, thing together, together and hold this thing up and actually allow for all of these things to, to, to emerge. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and something else that you were saying, uh, you know, just in, uh, in this, along these lines of, uh, sort of shooting yourself in the foot with, with trying to be very smart about things and, and trying to have, um, you know, that whole mentality is like, oh, well, but now I have to learn this and I have to know this now. And now I have to know this. So before I can and do all of these things is that that's that. Obviously, that's a fear thing. That's pretty that's pretty obvious, because what what is that whole process of like, oh, no, now I have to go and learn this and I have to know this and I have to da 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 da. That's all control. Right. It's all just this idea of like, I have to be able to control all of these things before I can do it. And I think that that's part of like that hamster throwing yourself on that hamster wheel is because it's like this thing that doesn't get acknowledged, but is the, is always present in that mentality, which is that again, you can never have control over everything. And that's why it becomes this never ending thing. Because there's, you'll, you'll just become aware of some other factor that you're not in control of. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that is infinite. <laughs> that is infinite because there's just so much that we just don't control. Right. Which is, again, I, I think just more motivation to, again, it's like, what is actually stopping you? Like what is actually a thing that is stopping you from being able to do this. I, I'm not saying that 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 answer is zero because obviously it's not zero for in in many situations, but for most of us, usually the answer to that question is actually there's nothing. There's nothing that's actually stopping me from doing this thing and mm -hmm. putting this out there and taking this action, <laughs> right? For the most most of the time, there's actually nothing that's stopping us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, so the, simplicity is such an important element in, in everything because people overlook the basics in, because I think that there is this part of it. It's like, well, it couldn't be that easy. Like, and it's like, no, actually it is, That that's the thing that's, that's like, it actually is easy it, and it should be easy. It shouldn't be difficult. So, um, you know, uh, one of my clients, um, like I had pitched their movie, <clears throat> not really even trying to do a pitch, but I just 
was like someone was asking about you know has anybody come up with a uh, really cool movie or whatever and i was like oh this is one and i told them the story and they were like that sounds awesome like I, like I, like th- that needs to get made like that's great I, definitely if that does like let me know i want to see it and i was like wow that's great so i told them i gave them feedback and they were like yeah you know i'm really nervous about pitching and they're like i i just don't know if i could do it and i was like well think about it this way if you saw a movie that you really liked and you wanted to tell a friend about it what would you tell your friend you know what i mean like that's what a pitch is like a pitch is really it's really not that complicated it's like because when i pitched their movie i didn't like run it through my pitch process here's how i'm going to tell them you know all the elements i get people to learn the elements so they know what what matters really what some something they need to relay at least when they create the story and the pitch kind of comes out of that too but a lot of the time it's just about being able to communicate what about this story is interesting or exciting to you and would make you want your friend to see it as well. Like I pitched a movie to you the other day. Um, it's called 10 years. It was something I stumbled across on, on Amazon. And I don't know, I think you'll probably watch it, but I think my pitch was pretty good because it was really just like, um, it was just a friend relaying the idea of another movie to another friend and like pitching your movie can be that easy. And if you look at the producer or, you know, distributor, whoever you're communicating with finance or whatever it might be, and you're just talking to them like a friend, I mean, first of all, they're going to appreciate that. And they're not going to feel like you're selling them, which is also really important. And then Mm -hmm. because you're excited about it and you're genuinely communicating what is interesting or exciting to you, they can pick up on that. And what ends up happening is people don't realize it's like, oh, I have to come in with my pitch and it has to be pitch perfect. I have to have all the things worked out. And it's like, if you pique their interest, they're going to ask questions, which is exactly what you want. And then they're going to say, well, what about this or that? And you go, okay, well, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, wow, cool. Okay, great. And it's just like, they're actually, so like something that uh, that I kind of stumbled upon in my process of filmmaking and screenwriting was, I want people to be in, engaged in the creative process of of every element. I want them to feel like they're a part of it. So like when I talk about Fight Club, which I mentioned is one of my favorite movies, every time I talk about it, I'm kind of involved in the creative process of communicating it with you, you know, like it's, uh, or with whomever. And it's, uh, you know, so it, it, my point, just to kind of bring it back down is like, I do believe simplicity is so important. And sometimes simplicity makes things just seem really easy. And people go, well, it can't be that easy. And I'm like, actually, it should be that easy. And they say, and they say, actually, with movie pitching, just while I'm on this topic, they say, like, if an if a five year old or seven year old could tell another five or seven year old about what the movie's about, then you have a good pitch. But if it if it's if people can't tell each other, your movie will fail because people can't tell their friends to go see the movie because they don't know how to they don't know how to describe it. And mm. I think that's um. Like I say that very loosely because I think sometimes people interpret that and they think, well, I have to have this really clear um, A to Z story structure that just, you know, that it, it doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes it's like, um, it's that's not what is your pitch. Your pitch isn't what, it isn't like this um, A to Z like pitch. It's more like, I don't know how to tell you, man. It's just, it's, it's like wild. It's fun. It's above reality yet. You feel super grounded in it. And then it's got Kung Fu. It's got action sequences and it's called (laughs) kill bill. And this guy, bill, like, I don't know what I mean. And it's just like, and, and, and so when you're talking about it, it, it sounds like an experience and people, you got to remember people also like, even when we're creating and when we're listening and we're experiencing, we're not actually very intellectual. We're mostly just emotional. So it's more emotion yeah. that you're communicating really than anything. And people forget that, right? They try to get yeah, so oh, intellectual yeah. and it, 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 it screws it up. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, that, those were my thoughts exactly as you were talking about it. It's like, yeah, it's so interesting how, you know, we think that we need to be somehow mechanistic you know, like we're, we're just so with so many things that we approach, um, 
in life and particularly within um, our vocations and careers and in, in business, that sort of thing. And like, certainly I'm, there's, there's a kind of professionalism, but the thing is, is that it's not, it's not an either or situation of like, it's got to be mechanistic and all business and, and no humanity or it's, you know, like it's, it's not one of those situations. Like I remember, uh, in high school, I was, uh, in this one program for a semester, which was like, uh, instead of having a bunch of different teachers, you had one teacher and, you know, you learned, um, you know, all of your subjects for, for that semester, but it also included, um, work experience basically. Cause you had to have, you had to complete a certain amount of work experience, um, in order to graduate. And, uh, and so they just had this program and so you got your subjects and then twice out of the semester for two weeks, you went and you worked a job somewhere. Ideally, you know, you tried to set something up in in a field that you were interested in and i went and i and i got uh, a work experience at the place that ended up becoming my uh, representation as an uh, as an acting agency uh and the interview i did like i remember because like they teach you all these things like okay here's how you interview and like here's the kind of a lot of the questions that you get asked and stuff like that and i remember just being you know, like really nervous, wanting to do well and all that stuff. It was just, you know, like most people. Um, but definitely like I, I have had, have a hyper thing of like wanting to do it right. Um, and so I went in and did the interview and, and whatever, which is in many ways kind of just like a formality, like, you know, the school and, and whoever agrees to take you on, to take you on, you know, they kind of become part of it as like, like, okay, yeah, like they're, they're gonna, they're learning how to do all of these things, but they give feedback. Right. And the biggest thing of feedback was just like that, that I remember was, uh, which like, he just needs to loosen up. Right. Like it was just like, he just needs like, like he was very like, like, you know, and obviously they knew it was just nerves or whatever, but they were just like, yeah, just like, loosen up it's it's like be more human right but we we think that we have to like somehow we have to curtail that side of ourselves in order to in order to present ourselves as as some sort of i i don't even know what like in control i know what i'm doing da 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 and it's like guess what like you can convey that while also just being a human being talking to another human being at the same time. Um, and yeah, and like that, that pitch, you know, like when you look at something like making a movie pitch, it is like a, you said it exactly. I was like, it is, it's an emotional thing, right? Like we don't go to the m movies to just like, yes, a, we, we want a good plot. We want a good story. We want, but it's all about the emotion of it the feeling that I get watching the thing. And that's when you're doing the pitch, what you're trying to get, you, I, you know, you're trying to want at some level capture the feeling that you want the audience to have. And, but now you just have to, you're just trying to verbalize it because you don't have the medium there yet, but you, you, you want it to have that quality of like, you're telling, you're telling your friend about this movie that they think that they should go and see right and to a large degree you know it reminds me of like how you know when you see kids you know talk about something that happened right like that's really exciting there was like like and i was like and i was like wow and then, you know like they're just like it's so expressive it's like whoa because like they just had an experience and an emotion and they're just conveying that excitement that energy and you know it's like you still want that yeah you know like you still want that thing you know maybe you like certainly there's some things you can bring to it as an adult to communicate but don't lose that 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 thing because in many ways that's still the thing that we're looking for we, we're still looking for that like to to connect with that little kid who's just so fucking amped <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about totally. this thing yeah 
Oh uh, man. You know, it's funny. Cause like you and I, you know, we were hanging out the, the other day and, uh, and um, we we're talking about movies and you're like, Oh, I got to rewatch that movie. That to me is like, that's so much what it is. It's like, you get excited about it. You get amped up about it. You're like, I got to rewatch that. I got to, I got to experience that again. You know what I mean? Like, cause every time you talk about a movie, like you get, you know, that you like, or someone's excited about, you know, you, you, you maybe see it in a new perspective and you think, Oh yeah. You know, like I want to have that, ex- I want to have that experience or I want to re-experience that, or I want to, you know, look into that. Right. And it's, um, you know, I think this is the thing is like, we don't have to be so, uh, you know, I don't know, so hard on ourselves about like what things are supposed to be, how we're supposed to be, you know, it's more of a, there's more room for, for play and like having like flexibility. And I do think that there's a certain amount of experiential creativity, like your you're experiencing it as you're doing it not that you know what the experience is but like you give yourself the opportunity to have the experience i mean this is so much like what acting is really i'm sure music has a lot of similarities there and i'm i I wouldn't be surprised if you could say like painting and other things do but it's like you you need to let yourself you you need to submit yourself to the experience of what you're about to get into you know and I think like things really changed for me as a writer when I learned to fully let go and not think about what it was that I had to do anymore. And I just was like, Hey, like, like, I'm just going to submit myself to the experience of it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it, let it happen. And, and for me, um, you know, really beautiful and interesting things come out. You know, there's things like, like I'll say, for example, I, I've put it on, on the shelf for uh, temporarily while I work on some other things just for the moment. But that script, I talked about this a while ago on the podcast. We wrote it, the townsfolk, and I've been in the process of rewriting it. But when I was going through it, um, I was like, you know what? It, it holds up. Like a lot of the writing we did, I'm like, this actually holds up really well. I was like, I was like, what do I even cut? This is, uh, what do I change? Like, you know, and then as I went through it, I was like, okay can I get this idea done in half a page? If it took me three quarters of a page or it took us two pages to get done, can I get it done shorter? So there's this like practical part of me as a screenwriter, like, let's just get this thing done quicker. I was like, well, that's easy, you know? And I was like, then, then as I was going through it, I'm like, does this, does this portion, which is still pretty good, does it serve what I'm trying to do? And then I go, okay, well, it doesn't. So what am I trying to do here? And then I find the experience and the information that I'm trying to get out. And then I submit myself to letting that happen. And it really works. I mean, it just makes the writing and everything just better. And I think there's a, I think there's a part of like every artist who goes, well, well, what about this? Like, I still have to do this, like this technical thing, this mechanistic thing, you know, it's like, yeah, you do, but um, you know, but like, once you know what you're doing, don't worry about it anymore. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like you're talking about being in an interview with an agency. It's like, I have to, I have to show up. I have to be on time. I have to do this. Okay. You've done that. And now you just got to talk to a person. And yeah. that's really what you should be focused on. You shouldn't be focused on all the shit you have to do anymore. You should be focused on talking to the person. Right. And it's like, it's such a basic fundamental step. <laughs> <laughs> you skip that step, you'll fuck the whole thing up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like, what's the most fundamental thing that I have to do right now? I have to talk to another human being. That's what you're doing. The fact that they're an agency and you're an actor and you want them to be your agent, you know, and all of that stuff, that's like, you know, you have to you have to submit yourself to some degree to the fact that you're now in it. Mm-hmm. And there's no time and no room for for disconnecting from the moment. Because at the end of the day, and I think this is true for acting, and I would say that this is true for writing and pretty much most everything. But like 
at the end of the day, if you if you subjugate simplicity and presence for anything else and you miss those two, and I even say trust, maybe if you if you don't have those three, if somehow those get missed because you're up more into advanced stuff you're trying to do, it doesn't matter what you do. You're done. You have to always have a sense of presence, a sense of simplicity, and probably a sense of trust, I would say, in every moment that that just has to be there. Because the moment you leave those and they are no longer there, the other things can't have nothing to stand on, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I just, I really think it's like one of those things is like, let me, let me just keep going for a second here because I'm relating this back to the screenwriting process. I have to trust that the character work that I've done up to this point is enough. And I have to keep it simple enough to know that this is what the scene is about. It's not about saving the world or, or making the greatest thing ever. It's about two people talking and that's what it is. And then I have to have the presence of mind to be in that moment as it's happening. And then everything else that I'm doing, all the other techniques I've learned, all the other tools and all that other stuff. I mean, really like that stuff maybe will come into play, but mostly I find that stuff's not really involved in the actual doing of the thing. Like, like the doing of the thing relies on these very fundamental basic things. And mm -hmm. they, they actually require a submitting or a subjugating of this need to control it. I have to let it kind of guide me. Otherwise, how am I going to have an emotional experience if I already know what's going to happen anyway, right? Like, cause I don't really, I think I do, but I don't really, you know, I kind of do, I kind of do but I don't really, you know what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's, you need that little bit of a, you don't really element in there. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, you know, <laughs> one of these things about, you know, if for anybody who goes into an artistic field or particularly within the art, in the arts, but I'm sure this translates to many different areas, but it's like, almost this cruel magic trick or challenge that is placed upon everybody because it's like, well, look, you got to know what the fuck you're doing, you know, and, and on some level in this thing that you've, that you've taken on, you know, like, uh, I'm not interested necessarily in seeing paintings from somebody who doesn't know how to, f how to fucking paint. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> but I, I, don't want to see the technique in your work. So it's like, you have to have it, but I don't want to see it. It's yeah. the same. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's this really, it's like, and it's yeah. like, what are those, well, like, what are those just constant, I think, you know, one of those huge battles for, for the artist, which is just like, oh my God, like, I've got to be able, you got to be able to do it, but no, but no one wants to see it. No one wants to see it. It needs to be invisible mm -hmm. because there's something else that I'm, that I I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think that that's one of the biggest problems. I definitely saw it within acting, but I think it, it happens in, in all of the arts. Um, you know, I've heard people speak to this on, you know, popping up where it's just like, you know, you have to, uh, 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 this whole thing of you have to, of having to go beyond the technique or that, you know, not wanting, not wanting to see it, but more, sorry, rather, it's not exactly what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that, um, we make it about the technique, right? And, you know, I teach Meisner and Meisner, uh, you know, who's a teacher to actors for anyone who doesn't know, but he, he, famously said acting is not about the technique and that was like when i i remember reading that <laughs> when i picked up his book and just being like whoa like because it's one of those things that like i wasn't challenging it in any way it was just like i know that that statement is true mm -hmm. <laughs> like i know that that statement is 100 percent absolutely true but it's it's something that for me at that time was so game changing and I know is, is one that still can just sort of absolutely level an actor 
And she's like, it's not about the technique. And she's like, oh, fuck, right. It's not about the technique. It's about something else. Um, you know, but technique is that, again, coming, I think, to me, why we hang on to that, on to technique, is because is because it, it gives us that illusion of control, right? I think it, it comes back down to things like, okay, it's this thing I have control of. So um, as opposed to to learning to enjoy the unknown space, learning how to operate in the, I don't know, learning how to operate in that space, being like, oh, I don't know. And, and using the, the skills that you've learned, the tools that you have to navigate the sort of the, the I don't know. But the I don't know still has to be there as an, as an essential element because otherwise I don't really care. And one, one thing, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, um, of the poetry of, uh, of Rumi, as many people are. And there was this line that, uh, that I've, read recently and I've and I've gone back to it and I've read it a few few times um and in this one poem he says sell your cleverness and pick up bewilderment <laughs> and I was just like oh oh <laughs> like just and I think that has a lot to do with what we're talking about here and some of the stuff that's come up is is we're often trying to be very clever and I can definitely, you know, admit to that at times in my life and still, um, to this day where I catch myself just trying to be really clever mm -hmm. and trying to show people how fucking clever I am. And it's just like, Oh shit. And it's good to catch it because I've learned through my own experience of, of, you know, pursuing acting and, and trying to do acting well that, that's always blown up in my face every single time that sort of trying to be clever, which is ego crops in. It's just like, ugh, it just, it, it just is awful. It blows up in your face. But this whole thing of, so sell the cleverness and pick up bewilderment, mm -hmm. right? Buy bewilderment. Um, because when given the option between those two things, right? It's just like, well, would you rather feel clever or would you rather feel bewildered, mm -hmm. right? I mean, maybe some people would take clever, <laughs> but I don't know. I think I would be like, I would rather be bewildered because bewilderment is, I feel like such a rare emotion, such a rare feeling to like just be, be struck by, mm -hmm. you know, like, to be bewildered is to be, um, you know, like overcome with awe and wonder and, and those, that, and, and for me as, as a human being, that's, that's, I would take that any, every single time. Well, it's a more, I mean, I think as much as being clever might feel good in the sense that your ego gets stroked that bewildering it that bewilderment experience is it's more present and alive i did a i did a the other week i did a panic room or not panic room a escape room i mean <laughs> thinking of that david fancher movie that's why i because we were just talking about it i was like yeah. no no it wasn't a panic room it wasn't panicking at all it was escape room and uh, i did it with a friend and it was it was uh, an interesting experience because you're trying to work together with someone to kind of like sort out these clues and figure things out, you know, and all of that. And um, as you, I suppose, as you do more of these escape rooms, you begin to figure out how you can think outside the box in various ways. So for example, there's this one that um, that came up and it was like, you know, there's wolves around this cause we were in this like cabin or whatever. And that was the story and all of this. And it's like, there's these wolves and they keep kind of, you know, I, I just, and the daughter was writing a message or something. I was like, I'm scared for you. Like, I don't want these wolves to come at you and, you know, and get you or whatever. And as they were, I was reading this letter, I'm like looking at this little fur thing on the ground and I'm like, well, it's got to be this, it's got to be something to do with this wolf 
thick, right? So I like pick it up and I'm looking at it. And then my friend's like, oh, we have a black light. And so he's like, let me shine the black light. And they shined it. And underneath the, the, um, the uh, rug that was kind of this wild animal is now these footprints that are getting picked up. And so you're looking at these footprints and you're going, oh, okay. So the footprints have something to do with solving this, right? But it was like, you, you, if you're paying attention and you're present, you can pick up on clues. And then there was this other thing that, um, you know, I had stumbled across where it was like, we were in this part and it was like, uh, you know, it's from generation to generation or something it said. And I was like, it's gotta be something like, I don't know why, but like, I'm like, what if it's a generation thing? And then we tried that and it turned out to get us through into this next room. And so then we're like, holy shit, like that worked, you know what I mean? But what I found, it's very bewildering because you're kind of like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how to solve anything. And and a lot of the clues when they get kind of put at you, you, you need to, like at least in this one, you needed to kind of just pay attention to details and think about how these details might relate and open up something that maybe you didn't, you weren't really thinking. And Usually the very obvious thing is not the thing. It's something about like looking into it and like, and finding it. Now, whoever put together this particular escape room had thought these things out and thought these challenges out, but the experience of it is very much like, like I, I have to pay attention and be present and try to take in like what's around me and then and respond and then sometimes you get things wrong right and then you're like okay that didn't work okay like that didn't work okay what's another option what's another way to do this you know what i mean uh and i think with um with creativity like you you know you need to open yourself up to the fact that you don't perceive everything right away and so to try and control everything to try and just like be like, I know what's best. I like, you don't really know because your perception, and, and I find this to be particularly true with screenwriting. And I suppose acting and somewhat true too, but it's like, I don't really know what I'm getting into until I'm there. And if I, if I know too much what I'm getting into, it's somehow like, undermines the experiential element of it you know what i mean like so you know another thing is just to kind of mention is like whoever you are i mean you can only perceive so much i mean there's so much things so many things so many things happening like all the time and you get a small tiny little slice of it in your perception so to think that you could have any control really at all is so arrogant it's just so like naive right it's like okay, I have to accept that like, there's probably a billion things going on and I can see like maybe a hundred of them, maybe 12 of them, maybe a few thousand, but like there's like a billion of them. And so there's all this stuff that's going around, going on and I'm just like missing it, right? And so like when you go in with the sense of control, you go in with the sense of like, I control this tiny little bit and then everything else is just totally up in the air. And we kind of do that every day in life, right? But like, and that's really more realistic. I mean, it's more because clever, clever is trying to get you to work within the known, but like bewilderment is getting you to work within things that aren't yet in your perception. And you have to, you have to open them up into your perception, right? Like, so that's part of why I think it's, it's such a, it's a good statement. Hey everybody, this is Evan. And this episode is brought to you by my book. Yes. I recently released a book called the actor's awakening, connecting spirituality to craft. Expand yourself as an actor and your craft through a spiritual perspective. Take a journey that will explore universal philosophies and insights to help you understand human nature in a profound way and develop practices to take your work to another level. Again, that's The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft, available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. And as always, if you like the show, please subscribe. Got my mic turned down. Uh... What also occurs to me with what you're saying is that is that cleverness 
is is yes it's working within the known but it's also um oh no it'll come to me uh <laughs> cleverness is um oh god damn it brandon is it like undermining the unknown or assuming no 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 it's uh, uh it's it's it has a particular quality to it in which it's um it's in the hypothetical it's in a theoretical it's working it's working in in something that 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 isn't real right like it's it's yes like it, there's an it, like what you're saying is like it's working within um something that's known from the past right like it's 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 working with something f from before and trying to apply it to the present or apply it to the future, right? Um, but that that at that point though, it it becomes it becomes theoretical, right? Whereas bewilderment, there's like bewilderment only really, in my mind, comes from real present attention, right? With what is. Right. Bewilderment comes from that just sort of like being struck with the thing that's happening right in front of you. Right. So there's actually something more real to that. There's something that's 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 so much more um, urgent, immediate. Um, there, There's just there's a level of reality to bewilderment that actually isn't there with cleverness. Cleverness is 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 often it's in a kind of a fantasy land to a certain to a certain extent. Does that make sense? I think so. I mean I, I think the thing is is like control is can control is kind of naive in, in a lot of ways. Like like if you're doing something safe and something that doesn't challenge you in any way, which should probably be boring, you can probably control a lot of things. But like when you begin to do things that, you know, they're not they're like a little risky. They're challenging. Like, I don't know, like, here's an example, right? Like going to talk to somebody that you like and maybe even ask them out, right? Like that, if you try to go in and be clever, man, like maybe you'll get around, but like for the most part, you, you need to be open because you don't know what you, you, you know, a lot of time you don't even know what you're walking into, you know, like you, you gotta just, you gotta just be present. You gotta be there and you gotta, you know, and, and just respond. And like, um, you know, people have in their minds, like, oh yeah, like, you know, people have never asked out anybody. You, know, you can't listen to them, tell you how to ask out somebody. They have no idea what it's like. What do you do? Like you think, oh, I'm going to go up and I'm going to talk to this person. This is, what, this is what you do. This is what you say. This is blah, blah, blah. What do you do? See, this is what, what do you do when the person like doesn't even acknowledge you? <laughs> I've had this happen. The person like, just like pretends they didn't even hear me. Like they're like, they're like, like, I don't even want to engage with this person. They even really looked at me and I'm just like, oh, this is rough. This is rough. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sitting here I'm, I'm or I'm standing here and this person is pretending I don't exist. This is like almost worse than a slap in the face. <laughs> so now I have to figure out how am I going to get their attention, right? And how am I going to do without being weird or creepy or whatever? <laughs> and uh, Important question. <laughs> and is it worth it? Do I even want to follow through with this any yep. further? Yeah. And those are all decisions you're going to have to make in the moment. It's all going to, you know, because when you go up to that person or whatever, and you, you know, you approach or, or do something like this, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know how they're going to respond. You don't know what they're going to do. And chances are, if you've never really done this and you get somebody that's just difficult, it's going to be kind of like crash and burn experience. It's going to be tough, but you'll find that, you know, you'll find that not everybody responds the same. I mean, you, you, you know, I've had moments where, you know, I was at like an art gallery and I saw a girl that I liked and she was looking at something and I thought, oh, she's looking at this kind of cool. And I just walked up to her and I said, what, what do you think of that? Or something like that. How you doing? What do you think of that? And, and it was more like, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Well, what, what do you think about this? What's, what's going on? And it's like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm just standing here. And, and it, and the person is open, ready to engage and they're open. And so you just respond. And if I would have had some line or some bullshit to say, it would have ruined everything. 
And I remember a guy came up to me at one point in college and he said, like, what do you say? Like, what do you say to these girls? You know, like, cause there's a lot of girls hanging around with me. And I just, I just was really uh, not just women, but I wanted to be able to talk to people. I was good at talking to women, but, but guys like that, but I was good. I was trying to get good at talking to people. And the guy said, well, what do you say to them? And I'm like, hey, how's it going is usually what I say. And he was like, no, you don't. He's like, you wouldn't believe me. It's <laughs> just like, like, it was the most basic thing. But really, what I started to find out, Evan, was that most of the time when I went up to talk to a stranger who didn't quite know that I was coming up to talk to them, they didn't quite see it coming, they're usually just so surprised that someone was talking to me that half the time they didn't even hear what I said to them the first thing I said because they were like in their own world. I had that happen so many times. And so one of the first things I learned to do is when I started to approach people was I just started to go like, let me just see if they heard what I said the first time I said it. And, and that's, I'm just, all I'm doing is saying like basically in a very friendly, easy way is, hey, I, I, I'm interested in talking to you essentially. Like, how are you doing? Like, what's what's going on for you or whatever? You know, something like that. Just, just something that just, to, just to break the ice to just say, hey, we're talking to each other. And usually, like, if you came in with a line, like if I came in a, with a line or something dumb like that in those moments, first of all, it would have it would have been embarrassing because I would have said the line. They would have looked at me and been like, uh, what? Because they wouldn't even got it. <laughs> like, they, they wouldn't even registered my wit and crafty yeah. <laughs> pickup or something, right? Like, it's just like, so there's an element to this, which I think is like, you you need to go into things and you don't even make a decision of what to do until you get something back, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, and let me take us one step further. Sorry, Evan, and one more thing. Let's just say you're doing sales. I've talked about this in the podcast. I believe this is the most important skill that a human being should learn in life is how to sell and how to, how to sell in a way where it's natural and, and good and everybody feels good about it. But like, if you come in, and you start trying to be like the gabber, you know, like you're like, how's the family? How's the blah, blah, blah. You do all that bullshit. Yeah. You're setting yourself up for disaster. Don't make assumptions. That person could be having the worst day of their entire life. And you just happen to call them on that day. If they're having the worst day of their life and you want to try to like, I'm going to make them happy. I'm going to bring their mood up and like try to talk about what's good to get them in that zone. If they're having the worst day of their life, that's what you need to let them talk about if that's what they need to talk about before you ever get to your fucking sales pitch or any of that <laughs> bullshit. And if you start selling them and their dog just died or their grandparent just died or something just tragic just happened, you're just going to crash and burn. It's going to be, it's going to be almost embarrassing, right? So the first thing you want to do is when you check in with someone is truly check in with them before you make any decisions about how to progress. And you might realize, and I'll just keep, I'm just on a rant here, but like, you might realize, you know what? This is not the time to pitch them on this thing. This is yeah. just not the time. It is not appropriate. And so you go, well, hey, you know, like you might even say like, hey, okay, well, great. Well, I'm glad I called you and I'm, you know, I'm glad we checked in. I hope you're doing all right. You might say like, you might leave and just say, hey, you know, I was gonna, I was actually calling because I was actually gonna tell you about this thing, but like, maybe we'll do that another day when you're, you know, you're feeling better and whatever, if you're okay with that. And they'll be like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, sure. You know, thanks. And they might even want to hear about it, but they'll feel like you weren't just there trying to get them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's too crafty. It's too creative. It's like, just relax. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's like trying to trade in this technical mechanistic approach to solve things when it's just like when, when we really just need to learn how to be human again yeah. and just be human with, with other people and even being human with, with ourselves to a large extent, you know, and it's like, you know, like the thing about like the pickup line, right. You know, like for me, it's like <laughs> the, the pickup line is like, you know, it's like a joke, right? Like everyone knows oh, this is yeah. a joke and like, and, and really the only effective pickup lines are ones that are like genuinely really funny. You know, it's like that those seem to be the only ones that have any sort of like place whatsoever, because then it's not actually really about like a pickup line. Right. It's it's actually about making somebody laugh. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. right? It's about going up to to another person. It's like, hey, want to hear a cheesy pickup line? Check this one out. And like, and you got to come up with an original one because it can't be one that's been heard that someone's heard before, right? Because it's like that. That's why it's like that whole thing is so often just such a crapshoot, right? Which is just like it's got to be like a joke nobody's heard. Right. You know, like, because that's the only way that works. Otherwise, stop trying to, to, you know, sidestep, manipulate your way out of just being a human being with another person, right? Because in a weird way, that's just against so often what I think that so many of us are trying to do mm-hmm. all the time. And it's just like afraid to be human, afraid to be vulnerable, you know, at, at even at, at just a, a, such a small level. You know, like we're trying to pr- just protect ourselves from from yeah. from being human. It's really it's really kind of a horrible thing that <laughs> <It is. laughs> that's you know, in our you culture. Know for me, Evan, is is this whole thing about expectation? Just drop the expectation. You know, like such mm. an important part of the whole thing. Like, you know, like you got to go in open to being like this might not go the way that I want it to go, and being okay with that. It's things get weird when people go in and they're like, no, like they're trying to like it. They're, they're, they're too attached to the outcome. It gets real weird. Mm-hmm. It gets real weird, you know? And it's like, you need to kind of be there and just be like, look, like maybe this person just really like, you know, maybe they're in a place right now and they just really don't want to talk and it has nothing to do with me and it has nothing to do with what I want. It's just, yeah. this is where they are. And if I try to force that and, and, and make that into something, you know, it's not going to go well. And, and people, I think they get, they get too in their control mechanism of like, I'm going to make it go this way, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, no, you don't know that. Like, and in another scenario at another time, yeah, maybe, but not this time, but yeah. 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 It's, it's funny. It's making me think of, you know, that the whole thing of like, it's not serious, you know, like, what are those expectations? What are those controls? What, like, what's the mindset when, when those are the things that are in play? And it's just like, it's someone who's just taking everything very seriously. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, and I think that that's such a, I, I, I just in my own life, like, I, I feel like I'm recognizing just how destructive a force <laughs> that that is of just like taking things seriously. It's just like it, it just turns everything into, into a kind of a, an absolute drag, you know, it makes it almost impossible to just go and walk up to, you know, a human being you don't know and, and strike up a conversation. Right. Because it's like, Oh, I've got to, I've got to have the right thing to say. And I have to know exactly, you know, like I've got like, suddenly it's like, Whoa, 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 Jesus, Jesus. Like, (laughs) like, like take a breath, (laughs) take a breath. Right. Like, like this isn't serious, whether they want to talk to you or don't want to talk to you. It's none of it's serious. Mm -hmm. Like, and maybe if you like, yeah, just, just taking that breath. Even in that story I was taking about the interview, it's just like, I was taking it so seriously, you know, it's like, there's so much tension, um, involved in that. And when there's, when, when you have that much tension, it's really hard. It's really hard to take any kind of, um, genuine action. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, and it's really hard to be who you are. Mm-hmm. when you're living with that, when, when you've got that tension in, in the background. I think also, you know, there's something about when you go into something is be, be mindful of like, what, what are you trying to do here? Like, cause for example, if you go and you talk to somebody and you say, I, you know, I want to strike up a conversation with this, but maybe this person is in a relationship, maybe they're engaged, maybe they're married, maybe whatever. And so, you know, you, if you come on, if you come in hot, right, you come in like going like, I want to date this person. I want like, I want to sleep with this person. I want whatever, like what you want something like that. Right. And they're in this situation where that's really not something they're going to be interested in or, or want to be interested in or whatever. You, 
took a risk and you found out information that you didn't know yet. And if that backfires in your face, you, you just eat it. You know, it's just like, I took the wrong approach. I remember I asked at a girl in college. I remember this is the first time this happened to me because I, I, I just was so young. I never really, I remember I asked her out, I walked up to her and I said, Hey, you know, like, so I always started talking. I said, you know, you're real pretty. And I, I'd like to take you out. She goes, well, I'm sorry, I'm married. And she showed me her ring. And I was like, I never even noticed to look for a ring. I didn't even think to, I was like, oh shit, I'm sorry. Like, I was just like, well, you're really pretty. And, uh, you know, and she's like, thank you. And I was like, it was, it was nice. I like backed out of it in a way that was kind of still classy and cool. And I, I went in hot. I went in going like, I like this girl. She's pretty. I want to date her, you know, but like, I, I didn't do it in a way where it made the interaction awkward. I was surprised. I was definitely like not expecting it. I, and I, uh, uh, an older version of me might be like, if I'm looking at a girl and I'm about to walk up to her, I might just check to see if she has a ring on her finger before I make that bold of a entrance, right? Because I mean, some people, maybe they don't care, but like, you know, these are these are things, right? There's information you don't have. And that's my whole point in this whole talk we're having is there's information you don't have. You don't know what's going on in their day. You don't know their necessarily their situation. You don't know a lot of things. And so you need to go in going like, here's what I know. This person's attractive. I like them. I like to, I like to talk to them. That's what I know. What I don't know is their situation, how their day's going, all of that stuff. These are things I'm going to have to find out. These are things I'm probably going to have to find out. And so you go in with a certain sense of like, I'm going to, before I do anything, let me try and get some, some, let me try and figure out what's the situation. And then, you know, like, then maybe I'll make a move. Then maybe I'll see, like, if things are, if things are kind of aligning, then I'll maybe make the move. But I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. You know, it's something something sometimes I forget even like when I, when I think to talk to someone, I get in my head and I'm like, oh, I just, I don't feel like it. And I do that every now and then. And it's just like, it's because I just get too ahead of myself and I forget the basics. Because if someone doesn't want to talk, that's fine. But most of the time, people, if you come in with a nice attitude and a good demeanor and you're classy, people don't mind someone that genuinely wants to know, like, how's your day going? Or, you know, or like, what's, what's up or whatever, like people gen generally, I find that if you're genuinely curious in them, most people are like, well, that's, that's all right. Now, granted, I have to make the caveat. If you come in weird, okay, <laughs> socially inept, <laughs> this is not going to work for you. So there might be some <laughs> things like if you're, if someone's listening to this podcast, and they're going, well, it doesn't work for me. Like, like, listen, you might think it's easy for me. It's not. I was socially inept when I like, when, when I was younger, I just didn't have the skills. I had to learn them. So if you're getting that response, just look at yourself, try to take responsibility and just go, okay, like it's something I'm not getting here. Let me try and figure this out. You know, let me try and work this one out because, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're coming in weird because you're just you know, you're, you're doing something inappropriate or you're getting into someone's space too close or, you know, or it's like the wrong environment. For example, like say you're on a dark rainy street and it's in like a shady area of town and you go approach this person, they might just be on guard because of the area they're in. Right. And you have to take these things into account and you might think, Oh, it's me. Like they don't like me. It's like, no, it's the situation to some degree that is playing against you and you're not responding mindfully to the, to the situation in a way that's actually making that person feel safe enough to actually open up and have a conversation with you. Given the right circumstance, if someone approached me under a certain circumstance, my guard might be up and I might just be like, mm, and I might just be like kind of giving them the cold shoulder, not because I'm not interested. I'm not because I don't like them because I'm in a situation where it's like, this could be dangerous and what are they up to and what's going on? And I just have that, you know, I'm just being self-protective and you, you know, you don't know. So when you're, 
when you're um, doing anything, and I think approaching people is a great kind of example, like whether it's a relationship thing or a business thing or just a friendship thing, is these basic skills are fundamental and foundational, just like they are in all art and everything, right? They're like, just take things into account, recognize that like, oh, you know what, I just didn't appreciate the fact that we were in this situation, and it wasn't the best environment to maybe be so forward or be so open or be so maybe I needed to give them more space before we'd even be able to have a conversation that would be comfortable, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, things like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I don't feel like we're too far off topic. I do feel like this is one of those things. It's just like, you don't know what's going wrong sometimes because it's just not in your wheelhouse of perception. You're not, you're not paying attention to that and you don't know what's going on for that other person. Well, you know, very often I think it's, again, it's because that thing of trying to control the situation too much, that when you're trying to control too much, your your awareness is compromised. Your actual, because you've, you've essentially put like sort of little blinders on yourself. You're, you've, you've tunnel visioned yourself. And you've willingly done it to yourself, you know, like in, and you've willfully done it to a situation. You, you've put these, these tunnel vision goggles on your, on yourself and it blinds you to all of these things, right? Which after the fact usually are quite obvious and you go like, oh my God, I can't, but like, like, of course, right? Like that was just like embarrassingly awful how, how I reacted to it, you know, and it's, it's it's very much the same way and you know very similar to how i teach a lot of actors which is just like you come in with all of these ideas of how you think you're going to do this scene you know and i and and i tell actors all the time like most actors are acting at each other you know they're not acting with each other they're acting at each other because you got one actor who has their idea of what they think the scene is and this other actor who thinks that they have you know, the, this is what the scene is. And, you know, maybe there are components that, that, yeah, like they've, they're, they're onto something, but like nobody's actually finding out meeting in the middle, working with the, off of each other. Like you're just acting at each other. You're acting, you you just have an idea that you're acting out, but you're not acting out the reality. And I think that's similar to what, to what you're saying you know it's just like okay i have this idea of who this person is and i'm going to just come up and i'm going to say this thing and i'm going to say this thing and i'm going to like and i'm going to come up real close to them and all this stuff and it's just like whoa 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 hang on a second like <laughs> like if open up your awareness to the situation right that's i i think that that's going to that that aids us more than anything else you know is again you know kind of like what we were talking about in our last podcast which is you know our our ability to respond Mm -hmm. right our ability our capacity and our trust in ourselves to be able to respond to the moment to the the actualities and the realities of the moment are actually where real confidence comes from Right. That's where real courage, confidence comes from is is in that. Right. Not in some in some idea that we're that we're marching around with, you know, waving, waving in the air. It's like, look, look at this thing. Look at this thing that I've got. It's just like, put it down. <laughs> like, maybe that'll come into use, but like, like, put it down because you don't know if you need that. And just. And just fucking be aware and be human <laughs> more than anything. Like, I think, uh, so I, I, I think that there is a certain element, which is if you can, if you can entertain, if you can, you know, if you can make someone laugh and you kind of want to, you're, you're going in with the intention to like make them laugh, to entertain them, to do whatever you're, you're, you're intending to do. I think that's all fine. But first of all, you need to establish a certain amount of rapport that they want, they are willing and they're open to that. You know what I mean? Like, and um, I think like what's interesting about this, this conversation to me is that 
we're, we're talking a lot about presence. We're talking a lot about responding and kind of that flexibility to, to be in the moment and be present and then work with that. And so like, you know, as we're wrapping this up, I suppose I would just say like, you know, if you're going to take on this, this new year, this whatever new version of being you and doing your life, like, why don't you look at life? Like, Hey, you know what? There's this little bit that I know. And there's this whole bunch of stuff that I don't. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little bit that I know, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to not, I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to keep building upon it. I'm going to learn more, get to know more, but I'm going to be open to this massive amount that I don't know. And I'm going to actively in everything I do, whether it's a conversation with another person or something you create, I'm going to explore this unknown at little bit, at least a little bit. I'm going to open myself up to it a little bit because I don't think you should go in all the time. Like I do think there's a place maybe to go in a little willy nilly, just kind of like, let's fucking see what happens, you know? But like, I think there is a certain amount of you have knowledge. And as you find like relationships that you build and you have more time with, you get a certain amount of consistency. You know how that person's probably going to respond. You start to get things and you just, you just have kind of an awareness about that person. So you kind of know what to expect. And so I don't think you should just like throw all that out by any means, but I do think that whenever you get into something, open yourself up a little bit to the idea that there's this part that you don't know, and that's fun to explore. And when you're creating your art or building something, push yourself a little bit into, okay, this is the part I know, but like, let's look into this part that I don't know, because that's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to really create. And that's where you're going to find some really like wonderful stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's been an interesting conversation that way because it's been like, uh, it's been a nice kind of, well, I didn't, I didn't expect it, but it's been nice to like, just kind of go over some of this stuff because I do feel like if people just kind of loosen up a little bit, relax, trust themselves, they come be a little bit more present in the moment, they'll, they'll get a lot more of what they want and they'll be a lot happier. And I feel like this conversation really encourages that not just in our art and our artistic endeavors, but like in our personal lives. And so you know, I'm definitely going to walk away a little bit with some of that and just kind of as a reminder, you know, because it's a good reminder, you know, it's like, yeah, it's not, don't get in your head so much, just kind of like, just talk, just connect, just be, you know, and let's see what happens, you know, yeah. and uh, maybe trust that you got enough stuff coming to the table, you know, like you don't have to be anything or do anything. You don't, you don't have to dance like a little monkey to like impress everybody, you know? Yeah. But your weird little things, like, I mean, I do them. I've done them. I'm sure everybody has, right? It's like, but yeah, it's like, yeah, you just be. Yeah. Beer? Well, yeah, let's do the beer thing. And okay, you're quiet, one. sir. <laughs> um, you're quiet. Your, what's, oh, uh, you're I, quiet. Sorry. I got to, uh, I, 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 sometimes I got to roll the, uh, roll the volume down off of my mic because, you know, I got the, uh, Got the little baby who likes to throw little tantrums uh, in the other room from time to time. Um, so uh, I'm drinking the Zunga Zunga Blonde Ale from uh, Townsite Brewing. And Townsite, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, they're up in. Uh, yeah, they're up in Powell Powell River, I think. But anyhow, uh, yeah, no, it's a it's blonde ale. It's nice and light, easy drinking. I like the name. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm having something. I've never had it before. This is from Patina Brewing. And it's uh, in Port Coquitlam. And it's a nice light beer. It's a Kolsch. And it says, brewed like an ale, crisp like a lager. Uh, I, I would, um, hmm. I'd say that yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even know where that sits on uh, on the spectrum. But um, it's uh, it's it's been a nice beer. It's been nice. I, I wanted something kind of light and easy. I've been pounding back some IPAs recently on the show. Because <laughs> I find afterwards, I'm like, oh, that hit me pretty good. This yeah. has been nice and gentle. Um, it's very. It's much more flavorful than than I would say like a lager is. But um, 
maybe I guess it has some lightness like a like a lager, not quite fully that ale feel. Anyway, that's what I'm drinking. So uh, let's uh, it's good. Let's let's rack this baby up, wrap it up, yeah. and uh, I don't know. What are your closing thoughts? Do you have any ideas, or should I go first? I I got I got some ideas. Um, so I suppose I could uh, I could kick things off. Okay. Um, you know, it's part of some of this conversation in terms of you know, we've talked a, a lot about how some of these things a lot of these things kind of translate across in art and in life as is very often the case. Um, and, and a lot of sort of the, what you just finished saying, uh, you know, we need to, uh, we need to trust in our humanity a little bit more, you know, like, I don't know why we distrust our humanity. We it's, it's our greatest asset. You know, I think that we see it as too much of a weakness, but it's, it's our greatest asset, you know, and, um, and this is something I've definitely, you know, spoken to before, like in my book, like in the, in like the first chapter, like in the introduction, it's just like, um, you know, I made a statement to the effect of like technique can't replace our humanity. Technique can't, um, replace open hearts, open minds, and, and, a, and a heart of compassion, right? Like it, it can't replace any of those things. Those are things that, that we're intrinsically, you know, are, are a part of, of who we are. And I think that we undermine them and devalue them way too much. And, you know, very often those are the tools that we need, um, are just those human things that we already possess and uh, I think to a certain degree I think a lot of us have lost touch with them and and we need to strengthen those muscles again or uh, strengthen those connections that we have so that they can function fully and properly because you know even in just some of the stuff you're talking about with something as seemingly uh you know just not 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 unimportant, but like, you know, something sim seemingly as, as frivolous as like, you know, going up and talking to someone that you like or someone that you're attracted to or something like that. You know, you know, I, I was definitely, uh, was no player, um, <laughs> you know, at, at that sort of time when, when that's most appropriate <laughs> in your life for that to be. I, I, I certainly was not, but I do know that like the moments in which I seem to connect with, with people and attract people who I was attracted with were the moments in which I actually was not particularly trying to do anything, you know, or the moments when I was just, uh, actually just enjoying myself enjoying enjoying life and just not ha and not having any expectations of of the conversations i was starting or or anything it was just it was just fun it was just play and and there was no and it's interesting how how certain situations just kind of completely opened up seemingly with not doing anything at all. Um, and I, I would like to think that it was in those moments that it was just actually that, that so much of my, my humanity had just opened up and, and was just out to play, mm -hmm. you know, it was, I was just playing and, and not maliciously and not, you know, with any agenda, it was just, actual play and and uh and it that brings so much it brings such a such a wonderful quality to to the moment but it also i think brings out who you are and uh so yeah yeah man humanity let's uh let's let's give it its place <laughs> Which seems like a stupid thing to say now that it comes out of my mouth, but it's just like let your humanity have space to 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 breathe and and exist. Yeah, well, you know, it makes you wonder why why you wouldn't, right? Like, like what's going on there? But 
I guess, you know, there's, there's fears and insecurity and all sorts of stuff that come up, which is really kind of what stops us from just being with ourselves. Right. And, and, uh, and doing this life, you know, I, this is something I've, I've been working on. I've been working through it because, you know, people, people are mostly, and this is a good thing. People are mostly thinking about themselves and their life and the things that are in their life that are important to them. And that's what their, their mind is going to be on like 99% of the time, you know, maybe every once in a while they go off and think about some other things, but like, for the most part, people are, you know, they're involved in their world. They live in their world. And when you go to approach somebody, you know, you're entering into that world that is established. And so you have your world and you're bringing that in. But like, you know, I, I, something I guess I'm kind of reminded of as we're talking about all of this is just that, like, the freedom freedom comes when you don't when you when you are when you open up to people's worlds and you let yours go you know and i think what yours is is the known right like you know your world you know what matters to you you know what you care about you know all that stuff what you don't know is their world and you don't know um you know you don't know a lot of these things and so you know i think a, a large part of this conversation for me has been about just opening up to that and, and genuinely engaging with it, you know? And I think most people get scared to talk to people because they start thinking about themselves. And if that person doesn't know who you are, I mean, they're not like, first of all, they're not going to be thinking, they know nothing about you. Like they're going to have an impression of you. That's, that's true. But like, you know, maybe you think, well, they're going to have this negative impression of me the moment they see me. Because, well, why is that? You know, well, what what's going on there? And can can you do anything about it? And like, you know, if it's a matter of, uh, you know, you're 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 not taking care of yourself, then maybe you need to take care of yourself. And maybe that's just a sign for you. Like, if that's coming up and you're having that kind of thing, well, then maybe take care of yourself. Like, figure that out, right? Like if you're, if you're making it about things that you can't control and things you don't like, you know, it's like, oh, I just won't like me because of the way I look or because of this or that. Right. And it's like, that's your shit. That's not, that's not necessarily how the rest of the world works. Yeah. Looks matter. Yeah. Yeah. Appearance does matter. Yeah. Presentation does matter. But like the thing is, is that it's, it's, it can all be worked through. You know what I mean? And, and people do it all the time. So, you know, it's, the this whole thing about like well i you know i don't like i don't think i'm i don't think i'm qualified or i don't think i'm good looking enough or i don't think i have whatever to talk to this person you have to figure out how to put all that shit aside that's your baggage it's literally your baggage and you need to approach that person and give them the opportunity to meet you and i mean that as an opportunity because they might have in their perception what they think they want, what they think is acceptable and all of this other stuff. But when you genuinely connect with someone, a lot of that shit will just disappear. It will just go away. And if all you have to offer is your presentation and your appearance and you don't have any substance, that stuff's going to come out. So, you know, there's two sides to this whole coin, right? Like, like there's certain things you can't control and there's certain things that, you know, you're just, you, it's just your lot in life. You just got to deal with it. You got to sort it out. You know, you gotta, you gotta move past it and go, okay, well, I'm alive. I'm doing my thing. I'm, you know, I don't necessarily look like this supermodel or something, but whatever, does that really even matter at the end of the day? You know what I mean? Like, um, pick up just, just, I, the way I'm looking at this is kind of like go in with the with the openness to 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 find out about that person's world and take the focus off yourself because the focus that's on you and is 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 just it's it's causing your problems and i would say this is the same thing with art like if you're writing a screenplay or something stop focusing on you enter the world of the characters enter the situation 
Don't worry about if you're a good writer or any of that shit. Like all that stuff is all your baggage. You know, you know, you know what a good writer is? A good writer is somebody that actually truly writes what they're doing. A good actor is an actor that's actually present in the moment of what they're doing. You know, um, you can use all sorts of examples, you know, like Philip Seymour Hoffman, late Phil, Philip Seymour Hoffman, is, I think is an exceptional actor. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily put him in the category of supermodel actor, but <laughs> brilliant actor. And when you watch him perform, almost none of that shit matters anyway. It just doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, you, you have to, you have to let go of this necessarily this idea that somehow you're not allowed like there's something about you that just you know if you can't control it then you got to let it go and if you can't control it then go do something about it you know you don't like your teeth go fix your fucking teeth like do what you got to do if you really think that's a problem you know what i mean if your breath smells brush your fucking teeth you know what i mean like do <laughs> what you got to do to clean yourself up you know if you're not if you're not taking care of yourself you're not dressing well you're not doing the things you need to do then go do that you know but after that you got to just let it go you know what i mean and like it's same with writing like i'm just kind of bouncing between these two subjects and i am wrapping this up evan i know i know but like same with writing man read all the books learn all the shit do do that that's fine but at the end of the day it's just you and the blank page man it's just you and the blank page so let it all go and at that point you have to be in the moment because all those books that you read and all those teachers you studied with None of that shit's going to matter when you're in the moment. I mean, you just have to trust that it's there and do the best you can because that's all you got. So I guess if I was going to leave the, I was going to leave you with something, I would just say like, just fucking relax, <laughs> you know, take it easy on yourself. Go try some stuff, you know, life's, life's happening. And uh, you might find that these things that you got in your head that you're trying to control don't actually matter anyway. And maybe you can just free yourself of them. Thank you for listening in on our conversation today. We hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you. Head over to our website, wayoftheartist.com, for more free exclusive material and learn about the show. If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going. <laughs>